Hey everybody, it's Steve from Metal Kingdom Fitness, and I am here to show you how to work out your shoulders and your legs using Toro Bands resistance bands. In my opinion, the best bands on the market, heavy duty strength, and they offer higher resistances that no other band would dare to offer. So I'm going to do shoulder presses to start. I am sitting on the bend to extend the range of motion. I want to get the best range of motion I can. So we're going to do 10 of these. Now when we go up, don't go all the way out. Hold it and squeeze. When you're going down, go down slowly. No need to go beyond the bottom of your ear. You don't need to go all the way down because that's going to change the resistance. Not only will it change the resistance, but it'll start engaging muscles that we don't want to engage while we're working on our front deltoids, which is what this exercise is designed to engage. Okay, great set, everybody. So like I said, this exercise was designed to engage the front deltoid muscles. Let's move on now to the side deltoid muscles or the lateral deltoids. This will give you width, and it will also create the illusion that your waist is smaller. So without any more hesitation, let's do side raises. So as previously stated, our next exercise will be the lateral raise. Let me show you a little bit about the technique of this before we actually do it, because it is a more advanced level exercise. It's easy to get an injury if you're doing it wrong, and it's also easy to engage the wrong muscles if you're doing it wrong. So let's get it right the first time. Now, a lot of times in the gym, you will see people with the dumbbells mostly, but with cables as well, and they keep their arms in front of their body when they're beginning this. This is okay, but it's also engaging the rear delts. We're going to do that later, so I don't want to do that now. I just want to engage the side delts, the lateral delts. This, by the way, is my favorite exercise currently. Uh, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. There's no in-between. It is my favorite, and the reason is because I've seen significant results in the width of my shoulders. So I'm going to try and keep my hands more to the side and watch my wrists. See how they're bent down? That will further engage the side lateral muscles. So we want to do that. If you're on a dumbbell, by the way, um, you can either do what I just did with bending the wrist downward, or you can keep the wrist straight, and as you're going up, turning them upward. We call this pouring the pitcher. You beer drinkers know what I'm talking about. So here we go. I have 40 pounds of resistance. I'm going to step on it with one foot to extend the range of motion. This type of movement on any brand of resistance bands will limit the range of motion. So you need to do everything that you could possibly do to extend it. So for me, it's stepping on one foot. You could try it seated. You could try it sitting on the floor. There's different variations, but I like this the best. I like to also get a deeper knee bend to further extend the range of motion. So I'm going to start with my wrist towards my side. <sighs> Love this exercise. The elbows are slightly bent. <sighs> the elbows should go above the shoulders. <sighs> wow, wow, wow. I love this exercise. How about you? Here comes our third exercise, the face pull. And when I go into public gyms, this is a very, very popular movement. And for good reason. It works the rear delts very well. There's only about three or four exercises that are good for the rear delts. So this is a very good one. I highly recommend it. It's called the face pull. I have the camera far away from me, as far away as possible, in fact, because it takes a lot of stretch on the band to be able to get the stretch that you need. So we're going to cut the slack, we're going to extend it further, and I don't want to step out of your screen. Okay. Now you can do an overhand grip, you could do a neutral grip, you can even do an underhand. I prefer the overhand. And what you can do is just pull it by your ears while squeezing your shoulder blades. 
I'm going to step back a little bit further. I know I'm almost out of the picture. So that's the face pull. And I admit that it's hard to maintain tension on the negative portion or the eccentric portion of the movement, but that's where you really have to fight it and don't let it just pull you back. That's where you're going to get the majority of your results, not from the pulling, not from the concentric, but when you're going back slowly. So try and fight that to just let it go back. I understand gravity and inertia and all of those physics things that I don't really know the names for. But I know it does come into play. So just do your best. And uh, that concludes the shoulder portion. But now here comes legs. Now we have reached the leg part of our workout. We are going to work the legs. We're going to do one exercise for quads, one for hamstrings, and one for calves. So let's start with quads. And we'll do squats, the granddaddy of all exercises in many people's opinions. Now, a squat is called a compound exercise. It works multiple muscles at the same time. However, you can control it somewhat by your foot placement. I want to work on quads today, so I'm going to keep my width, my foot width, relatively small, just about shoulder width. Now, we also want to turn our toes outward slightly, and this will help hit the inner sweep of the quad, the inside quad muscle. And it'll give it that teardrop look that uh, is so desirable. <sighs> so I'm going to put the bands. I like to put them behind my arms. They're resting against my triceps, more or less. <sighs> so I can keep them in place. They don't slip. <sighs> you don't have to go all the way down, especially with the narrower foot width, because that will prevent that. By holding the handles in front of me, I'm trying to simulate a front squat, which is more designed for the quads as opposed to the hamstrings and the glutes. It's a killer, but it's worth it. You might have problems walking tomorrow, but trust me, it's worth it. The second exercise we're going to do for legs is for the hamstrings, and it is called pull-throughs. Okay, what you're going to do is anchor your door at the bottom as such, run your toro band through it, and then you're going to step over both bands. And you're going to get into a knee squat. Now, the idea is to get... Whoops, excuse me. See how durable those hands are? Did you hear that noise? Oh, my God. You want to get enough... Resistance, you don't want any slack, so that you can feel it when you reach through. It is called a pull through. And I think the most important part of the movement is the ending movement. I try and go in up to my elbow. You'll see what I mean. By the way, hold it, the bands crotch high. When I first started, I was doing this ankle high, and I was definitely not feeling the hams the way I was supposed to. So learn by my mistake. I don't mind. Okay, so we're going to stretch up. And then we're going to go through, see, and I don't have enough here, so I'm going to screech up just a little bit here. Ugh. Much better. Yeah, you feel it. Try and go through to your elbows if you can without creating slack. Ugh. Yeah, I really feel it on the end. Great set, great set, great set. So that just leaves one exercise remaining, and that's going to be another one of my favorites, standing calf raises. And here we are, our last exercise, standing calf raises. 
This is another one of my favorites. Um, I've always been genetically predisposed to uh, muscle growth in my calf muscles, so uh, something I've always looked forward to. So I'm going to put my arms, by the way, the uh, anchor is on the bottom, just like it was in the previous exercise. Whenever you can, try and arrange your exercises in a sequence in which you have to do as little switching around of the bands or the weights as possible. It'll make the workout go quicker and therefore more enjoyable. So I have my hands again up by my shoulders, overhand grip, the bands resting on my forearms, triceps. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lean forward ever so slightly and push up on the balls of my feet. That lean is what's going to make the difference. I hope you can see my toes, but I have a feeling you can't. But you can tell by my height that I am going up in the air. <sighs> my feet are open just a little bit, a little bit less than shoulder width apart. You can put them completely together or you can move them to full shoulder width if you wish. Calves and abs can't be worked enough. There's no such thing. You don't need rest days. If you wanted to, you could do calves and abs seven days a week. I like to alternate them. But now I've also added on my off day what I call an accessory day, where I do all the parts that I can't get to during the week, the smaller parts, such as calves, traps, forearms, abs, I do them all together. Whew. Your calves should be burning. You'll get used to it. But remember, we practice progressive overload. You've got to keep increasing the weights uh, every month, uh, every six weeks, whatever feels comfortable for you. But don't stay at the same weight forever, please. 